Hello Shooters, on September 21st, 2013, an unknown number of heavily armed terrorists invaded a shopping mall in Kenya, Africa. The Westgate Mall is located in the capital city of Nairobi. The terrorists were hell-bent on killing as many non-Muslims as possible, although they didn't, they didn't care if Muslims were killed in the process. These thugs carried on unspeakable mayhem for 48 hours that resulted in over 72 deaths and hundreds of wounded. What would you as a CCW holder do? Consider what you would do if you were a CCW holder with your family in the mall when heavily armed thugs entered and started shooting. It's probably something you ought to think about. With that in mind, we came up with the Kenya Mall Drill. The premise of this drill is to help you exercise some skills, some tactics, and some mindset that may prove useful should you ever be faced with the tragic circumstances of armed bad guys in a mall. This drill is meant to integrate skills with tactics and mindset. It is not meant to be the thing you should do in a real situation. The actual situation you find yourself in will dictate the tactics, not this drill. However, you will see how this drill can help you be better prepared. Here's the scenario. You've been separated from your loved ones in the mall when bad guys emerge and start firing. The bad guys are between you and your loved ones. You don't know exactly where your loved ones are. You just know they're down toward the end of the mall. You've not pre-planned with them a rally point where you should all meet, somewhere outside the mall, so you must try and find them in the mall. This drill requires the following. Five barrels or other forms of cover typically found at a range. Five targets, ideally with each wearing a t-shirt. Five target stands. Four different types of firearms. Must include one handgun, at least one AK. Arrange the barrels somewhat like you see in the diagram below. These will represent columns or planters in a mall, or anything really that can be used as cover concealment in a mall. Set the targets out also. You have to be careful when you're setting them out so that uh, when you're shooting a near target, the bullets don't go through it and hit a farther target. As mentioned before, uh, put a t-shirt over the target. It helps with realism, helps the mindset a little bit. People don't look like IDPA or USPSA targets. They wear clothes, so dress the targets. Helps with mindset. Place a ground cloth or gun case on the ground right in front of targets T1 through T4. An additional one next to C1 through C5. Then with the four different firearms you've gathered, place one on each ground cloth or gun case in front of T1 through T4. With each firearm, either have it be totally unloaded with a few rounds lying next to it, or set it up so it's in the middle of a malfunction. Try and make it so there are no more than five live rounds per firearm. Do not let the students know what condition each firearm is in. <laughs> then follow the instructions on each picture below. As the instructor, ensure each student utilizes cover properly. In other words, make sure they're not exposing any part of themselves to enemy fire unnecessarily. Uh, also ensure they maintain situational awareness while behind cover. Ensure they constantly are looking behind them and not get tunnel vision on what is the known targets. In real life, bad guys can appear from behind them too. Regarding the firearms that we pick up, try and get a variety of them so that, that hopefully there'll be at least one firearm the student has never fired before. If they're trying to load an unfamiliar firearm or clear a malfunction from an unfamiliar firearm, induce them out of stress by telling the student, hurry up, a bad guy's coming. You know, something like that. Also encourage them to maintain situational awareness and not get tunnel vision on the gun while they're fixing it. Do not teach everyone in the class the manual of arms for all the pickups. Let them, through, let them run through this cold. We want the stress to be as high as possible. Unfamiliar firearms will, will increase the stress factor. After everyone has run through it once, then teach them the proper way to manipulate all the pickups, and then let them run it again. So here's the skills they're going to be practicing. They're going to be uh, demonstrating and practicing the skills to manipulate firearms to get them in firing condition as soon as possible. The skill to hit only what you're aiming at from behind cover, because you're going to be good people in the mall too. And shooting from both shoulders. The tactics they're going to utilize, proper utilization of cover and concealment. Make sure they don't expose any part of their body to enemy fire unnecessarily. Changing cover locations as often as possible. Don't get married to one piece of cover. And utilizing both sides of cover. Don't always use cover on the right side. Mix it up a little bit. Right on. The mindset things you want to go over. Firearms are tools. They're not weapons. You are the weapon. If your tool stops working, get another one. Keep your head in the game, even in very high stress situations, and maintain situational awareness. Hello, shooters. Got to hand it to Lima Mike. He's my alumni. He helped me. Uh, he was the guinea pig for the for the run there. 
I let him wear my helmet so we could get the, the, the helmet cam on there. And the reason I wanted the helmet cam on, uh, on my student was so that you guys would be able to see uh, when he was situationally aware and when he wasn't. When, when you couldn't see any targets, he wasn't situationally aware. When you could see the targets, he, he, he was. And Lima Mike and I went over this afterwards and see that's, that's the importance of training with an instructor. An instructor can pick up on those things that you won't catch yourself. That's training. Training is when, un, under the watchful eye of an instructor. Then you practice on your own. Now Lima Mike, when he's uh, practicing on his own, he knows to try and be more situationally aware when he's trying to get a gun up and running. Instead of working on the gun down here, he's going to work on the gun more up here so he can keep, keep his peripheral vision up and going where it ought to be. And, you know, there's a few other things he's going to work on. So, uh, so don't don't nitpick him, don't nitpick him to death on the video. Uh, that that whole purpose is to to get you out there and do this drill and find out where your weaknesses are. This is when you want to find your weaknesses, is when you're with an instructor. You you don't want to find out your weaknesses when people are shooting at you. Okay, the time to find out your weaknesses is now. So uh, so do this drill. Uh, it'll point out some things you need to work on and uh, do it under the watch fly I'm an instructor and uh, appreciate you watching and if you like what I do here you know I appreciate the likes and the subscribes and the shares it uh, it makes this hard work uh, worth it and uh, so be safe we'll see you next time